All right, so we want to find the derivative of this function, f of x equals 1 over x minus 1, by using what I'm calling the limit process, okay? Or the definition of derivative could be the direction as well. That is the derivative, f prime of x is the limit as delta x goes to 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. Okay, that's their definition of derivative. Um, I'm not going to go into the explanation of where this comes from. Hopefully you've already seen that and understand it. Okay, but we're going to use this to find the derivative. Uh, you'll have a much easier way to do this later. Okay, but for now we're going to use this derivative or this limit process to find the derivative. Okay, so by this definition for this function, 1 over x minus 1, f prime of x is the limit as delta x goes to 0, f of x plus delta x, right? So that means really I'm just going to substitute x plus delta x in for that x. All right, that's f of x is 1 over x minus 1, so f of x plus delta x is 1 over x plus delta x minus 1, minus f of x, all divided by delta x, okay? Uh, you might also use h. Uh, for that change in x, you see that pretty often in textbooks as well, okay? Uh, replace delta x with h, same thing, all right? Uh, okay, so now I got a pretty messy, complex fraction, really, right? I got to try and simplify that and get a derivative. Remember, my derivative for this should be a function of x as well. Um, so what I got to do, this typically we have complex fractions, something you learned a long time ago. There's a couple ways to get rid of them. What I like to do is multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the LCD of these, what I call smaller fractions, or the fractions in the numerator in this case, okay? So the least common denominator is simply going to be the product of these two denominators, in this case, x minus 1 times x plus delta x minus 1, all right? That's the least common denominator. So i got to multiply that by numerator and denominator. So i got to multiply that by this denominator, and the same thing, by the numerator, that is this whole thing, by that, okay? And that should reduce this thing pretty nicely, or at least hopefully. All right, so we're gonna multiply that. Remember, that's, that's one of those old tricks we do in math a lot, we multiply by one, right? That's just this, some number divided by itself, right? Um, so that won't change, it. won't change our quotient, okay? So let's go ahead and see what happens when we do that. So make sure you carry the limit with you, that's important. My students often forget to say this limit equals this limit. They just say equals all this stuff, okay? But it's still a limit. They haven't taken the limit yet. And now what happens when I multiply this through? Well, you'll see if you take this, think about it as distributing, you take this whole product and multiply it by this first fraction. What's gonna cancel out? This is gonna cancel out with this, right? They're the same factor. So they'll cancel out, it leaves you with only the x minus one. Okay? and then take this and multiply it by that. What's gonna happen? The x minus ones will cancel out. It'll just leave you with this minus sign and the x minus ones cancel out, leave you with that. Okay, with me so far? Um, so it looks a little better already, right? We were able to eliminate the complex fraction, that is the fractions that are in the numerator. And in the bottom, I just got the product of three things, this, this, and this. Okay, so I'm just gonna write that. Delta x times x minus 1 times x plus delta x minus 1. Okay. Like I said, I promise you, when you get a little bit later in calculus, you'll find a much easier way to do this. Okay. Um, but for right now, we're doing it by this process uh, to get familiar with this definition. Okay. Um, all right. So what's next? Well, this is the fun part. A lot of things are going to be eliminated now. Um, provided we got a nice easy function to work with, which we do. I'm going to distribute the negative sign, right? And I'm going to maybe skip a step here. You guys can see that x minus x is 0. Negative 1 minus negative 1, or negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That is, these x's cancel out. That negative 1 cancels out with that positive 1. It leaves you with only that term right there, negative delta x. So that's nice. And in the bottom, I'm just going to leave it like that.
and I just did what I told you not to do, it's still the limit, right? We want the limit if delta x goes to zero, okay? So I'm running out of board here, but we're almost done. Delta x over delta x is one. I'm gonna put the negative one just to be safe. And now look what I got. I got negative one over x minus one times x plus delta x minus one, all right? I can now take the limit. Finally, I can take the limit. Something I didn't say before, let me back up. I still, I can't take the limit as delta x goes to zero by substituting, because if I, if I plug that in, it wouldn't give me any information, right? It would just be a zero in the denominator. Um, and then still at this step, I can't plug in delta x to be zero, um, because that would give me a problem, right? So I got to kind of manipulate it away until I get to this point, where we had this nice cancellation here, right? And now I can plug in delta x to be zero, right? After a little bit of algebra, a little bit of manipulation, I can now plug in delta x to be zero, and that guy will go away. It's only delta x left, okay? So when I plug that in, what do you get? So this is gonna be equal to, so take the limit, negative one up top, and then I just plug a zero in here, right? That's, how, that's our favorite way to evaluate limits, right? By just plugging it in. So when I plug that in, I get an x minus one times an x minus one, that's it. Okay, and there is my derivative, like promised, a function of x. Negative one over x minus one squared.